everybody, welcome back to Dreams and Visions in the Bible. Um, I believe this is number 15. We're kind of taking a look at a certain passage of scripture. I believe I have briefly touched on this in this series. However, we're going through the Bible and we landed in Job. And I thought about just kind of planting this in as a side note um, inside of another uh, teaching. But um, as I started thinking about that, praying about it, I felt like the Lord was really having me um, kind of go in more in depth on dreams a little bit in this teaching because the reason, let's just face it, the reason you're watching is probably because you're interested in dreams and visions and there's some warnings and some guidelines and some things that you need to understand and know. Maybe this is the only series you've seen of mine. Uh, maybe this is the only type of teaching you've ever received with dreams. And so I just want to kind of give you a uh, a couple warnings and some guidelines that are super important with dreams as, as well as kind of broaden your understanding of dreams, okay? Um, so this passage of scripture is, so it's going to look a little different tonight, in other words, okay? So this passage of scripture is out of Job <clears throat> chapter 33 and it's verses 15 through 18. I will pull it up here. Like I said, it's going to look a little different. I won't pull up the Bible this time. It's just going to be um, you will see my notes. This is what I'm looking at over here. Um, <clears throat> so we'll read the passage. I just have it written right there and just uh, go through point by point the things that the Lord uh, laid out to me to make sure that I share, um, to make sure that you're on the right track for dreams and visions and that type of thing. All right. Um, some of it we've already discussed and some of it um, we still need to discuss because it's worth noting one more time and some of it is probably new stuff it, again especially if you've only seen this series all right so uh verses 15 through 18 in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn men from his deed and conceal pride from men he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Okay, so in other words, in a dream, in a vision, and through opening their ears, okay, God is sealing instruction, and he does this while we are slumbering, while we are sleeping on our beds. Um, we, we see that he uses it as a way to as a way to seal our uh, seal his instructions, right? Seal our instructions. Um, to turn us from our deeds, right, in verse 17. And he, he does it while we're sleeping to um, not work against our pride, right? He doesn't want to fight against our pride while we're awake. When we're awake, our flesh is awake, okay? And our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. And so when our flesh is involved, there's a, a pride battle going on, self-will, right? Those types of things. Um, as we follow Christ further, Every day should be dying to ourselves. It should become a practice. And we're gaining more and more humility and that type of thing. We have less flesh and less pride, all right? Um, but he chooses to seal his instruction during this time because our pride can't get in the way while we're sleeping, okay? Um, and, he, and he does this because he loves us, right? Um, the Bible says that he's not slow in keeping his promises, but he is patient, not willing that any would perish, okay? And so we see that he's doing this to keep us from the pit, to keep us from perishing by the sword. In other words, from reaping death, from reaping um, eternal life in hell, <laughs> basically, which I guess you could call eternal death, so to speak. Um, this queued up the, <clears throat> the verse... After I read this, this reminded me of this verse, Proverbs fourteen twelve. It says, "There's a way that seems right to a man, but its way in it in the end, its way is death." In other words, okay. And so we're constantly thinking we know best. The Bible says that we plan, you know, what we're going to do, but God directs our our steps. He directs our our paths. Um, thank goodness, where on earth would we be without His instruction, <laughs> right? And and even even those who don't believe, He instructs. He He come um He comes to instruct them so that they don't uh, perish either. Okay, and um, we see that uh, like you don't have to be you know a Christian, which would you consider yourself a Christian or a believer or any of those things for God to minister to you in your dreams and to give you even warning dreams, right, about your future. Um, and so that's just cool. It's just this neat thing that it's like, he loves us. We're his children. It doesn't matter if we're 
good children or not, we are his children and he loves us and he wants to guide and um, protect us and instruct us so that we can find life, right? And so we can see the examples of that where um, he came and he warned, um, I can never say this guy's name, I say Pilate. I don't know if it's Pilate. People say it all different. Um, I say Pilate, but anyway, um, his wife, right? And we'll talk more about that as we get there, but she was instructed and warned in a dream to wash their hands clean of anything that would happen to Jesus. Um, we see also um, Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh wasn't a godly man, but yet God ministered to him and told him about the famine that was coming. And, and so we see that God cares whether we're godly people or not, whether we're followers or not, whether we're Christians or not, he cares and he comes to instruct us, okay? All right, but an important note is that not all dreams are from God. This is so super, super important. Even though our passage of scripture says that while we're sleeping, God comes to instruct us. Do not assume from that. We can very easily assume and take from that that it's saying that all dreams mean it's an instruction from God. It is not. It is not. Um, dream, dreaming is a language. It is a very complex language, just like learning Spanish or French or Japanese or Taiwanese or whatever. Same kind of scenario, okay? And so not all dreams are from God. The more you dream, like the more, more often you dream, like for example, my husband will have like two dreams he remembers a year. I, on the other hand, dream three to five dreams a night sometimes, you know? And so the more, the more that you dream, the more likely you are to have uh, experienced and experienced these types of different categories that I'm about to go into with dreams. All right, so just kind of in a nutshell, breaking it down, um, there's different types of dreams. We see dreams right here in the center. Um, and then up above here, we have metaphoric and literal dreams, okay? Um, and we'll go more into depth here in a minute. And then over here, we have intercession and prophetic type dreams, overcoming and healing dreams, and dreams that are true and dreams that are false, okay? And there's different reasons for that. We'll go more in depth here. All right, dreams are not random though. And I just finished doing a, um, I don't know if you watched the Dream Lovers series, but I posted a video earlier today in that series about a dream that I had that came to pass. And we talked more in depth about um, how dreams weren't random and that type of thing. And, and so, you know, a lot of times people are like, wow, I don't know what I ate last night because I had a really weird dream. Typically, dreams are not random and it doesn't work like that. However, sure, maybe tomatoes or the spices that were in your spaghetti might um, have an ability to open up receptors in your brain, making you more susceptible to, or making you more receptive to the, the supernatural, okay, in the spiritual realm. Sure, that's a thing, just like certain drugs can do that. Just like, um, I mean, for crying out loud, maybe just Benadryl, you know, it doesn't have to be anything so extreme. Maybe sage, you know, um, different types of things can have that effect on us, but it isn't that that made us dream, okay? Um, it's just opening us up to the world that already exists around us, making us more receptive to it. Now, I do not... I do not recommend or suggest at all that you go playing around with figuring out what it is that makes you dream more so that you can enter this spiritual world, okay? Talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but dreams are spiritual. That, that's what it is. God built inside of us an antenna, um, a, you know, a, 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 like a receiver of some sort that can um, communicate and pick up on the, the spiritual realm around us, right? We know that in um, uh, in Ephesians, it talks that the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness of this world, you know, and so on. And so that battle exists around us day in and day out, whether we see it with our physical eyes or not. Now, when we're sleeping, our flesh sleeps, but our spirit does not. Our spirit does not need to sleep. And so it is just like an antenna just receiving and relaying to your brain what it sees. Okay, and that language just happens to be in pictures and images and that type of thing, okay? Um, and so God planted this in us, though. He, he knew ahead of time, right? We can't just say that, that like, he didn't see what Satan, um, 
he, he didn't see what Satan had planned. He knew what Satan had planned in the garden, and his goal was still to fellowship with us. His goal was to not leave us as orphans, as he says. His goal was to communicate with us, and he, before time, when man was created, designed us with this ability to communicate with him, to receive instruction from him, and so on, okay? Um, so let's talk about true and false dreams for a minute. Um, again, this is just a nutshell uh, view of dreams. It is a language and it is a very complex language. And I do not profess that in my seven years of really, really studying and praying and seeking and fasting and knocking and searching out about dreams that I have it in the bag. Okay. I do not, I can only share with you what I have learned so far. Um, and trust me when I say that I have tried and tested the things before I even tell you what they are, because it is super important for me to test those things out first. All right. So true and false dreams. Again, um, not all dreams are from God and they're not all instruction, right? We fall into a very dangerous path if we begin to think that everything we hear, see, and dream in this supernatural realm is true and from God, okay? Remember that Satan is the father of all lies. So him and anyone who works for him, you can bet, are going to lie to you, okay? Um, again, I have here noted Ephesians 6.12, talking about the spiritual battle that exists around us. But um, dreams dreams can be influenced by demons or bad spirits, etc. Okay, especially things that are going on in our lives, um, spirits that follow us around all day long. What kind of spirits are you feeding? Because those are the type of spirits that are going to be around you, and those are the type of spirits that are going to be communicating with you while you rest. Okay, um, so like for example, maybe you have a pornography addiction or something like that. Um, you just have a really lusting heart, lusting eye, that type of thing. You are feeding spirits that you are feeding sexual immorality spirits and that may come up and manifest in your dream life okay um just different things like that also you know once they know hey this person is paying attention to their dreams believes that dreams are true and real they will try to pretend that they're an angel of light uh, pretend that they um, are speaking truth to you to make you look like a fool just to get you to you know uh, stray away from god's word and so on um, so yes demons and bad spirits etc can influence your dreams um, and yes, on the other hand, of course, you absolutely could be getting revelation about present situations, about past situations, uh, even answered answers to your prayers. I can't tell you how many times the Lord has answered something I prayed in a dream, okay? Given me wisdom, that type of thing. Um, and obviously, we'll go more into prophetic dreams here in a minute. Um, okay, so let's look at metaphoric and literal dreams. Some are straightforward. Some are just downright literal, right? You dream that you um, went to the store and um, they're out of cereal. And you know what? Guess what? You might actually go to the store and they're out of cereal. You know, uh, sometimes those things are straightforward. Um, that's a kind of a lame example of what a literal dream might be. Let's say that um, tomorrow at some point you were going to lay your baby down for a nap and you had a dream that you laid her down for the nap and the, you know, the, the bassinet broke and, and she fell out, you know, um, God might be actually telling you that's going to happen. Don't lay your baby down. And instead of putting it into a, um, you know, metaphoric language where it takes time to solve this riddle and solve this puzzle, it's time sensitive information. Okay. And so, um, it's like the, the mail you get, except it's not spam, <laughs> but you get mail that says time sensitive on it, right? And so that might be a reason that a dream could be literal, okay? Um, but I'm sure that there's plenty of, of reasons um, that God has for different types of dreams that he gives in, when they are literal. Um, could be that it's just a lie. Um, I find that the Lord more often than not speaks in a metaphoric language. He does. He absolutely does come and um, speak uh, plainly, you can ask him too. When you're seeking, knocking, Lord, I'm confused about some things. Can you please, can you please speak plainly? And he can, and he will confirm and come and speak plainly to you. But the majority of the time he speaks in riddles, um, probably to teach you 
the language. Also, I suspect greatly that it is because there's a certain company in the atmosphere. And like Jesus said, when they asked him, why do you speak in parables? He said, it's because it's, it is for you to know and for them not to know. And so it could possibly be that reason and, and so on. Um, but my point to that is just that sometimes, liter sometimes the literal dreams that don't have a riddle or a rhyme to them can actually just be a lie. Um, can be demons just trying to sway you, trying to, um, you know, take you off course and so on. Um, and I'm sure there's other factors. Like I said, I don't have this all in the bag. I can only teach you what I know so far. Um, so those are literal dreams. Metaphoric dreams are in riddles, parables, play uh, play on words type thing um, because that is the dream language it just is that is what our spirit sees like i said your flesh is sleeping your spirit is awake and it is telling you what it sees but it can't speak the same language as you it doesn't have a mouth and so it its only way to communicate is to give you pictures of what it saw it's like pictionary plain pictionary with your spirit when you wake up your flesh is trying to understand what your spirit saw. And it's the only way to do that is, is to make these images and try to tell this story. Um, but, um, and, and that is not to say that it made it up themselves, but it could be relaying to you a very message that the Lord has gave who also speaks in riddles and images because he knows that our, that is what our spirit speaks, okay? I believe our spirit understands the mystery. Um, it is our flesh that does not and requires interpretation, okay? I hope that doesn't confuse anyone. <laughs> That's kind of a, a big and deep thing. Um, so, and some dreams are a mixture of both. Some dreams have literal language in there and figurative metaphoric language in there. So they can be a mixture of both. Um, like I said, I find the, the weirder the dream is, it is more likely from the Lord. But there's other ways to test these things, and that is coloration, um, which I haven't talked much about. I don't go into too much depth in, in this teaching, but coloration is a big deal in dreams. It really tells us kind of, for lack of a better word, and don't judge me on this because I'm not talking about channeling, but let's pretend that your brain is a TV and uh, or your spirit. Let's say your spirit is a TV and it has lots of channels. Some people have more channels than others and, and that's why they'll dream more often than someone else would dream, okay? Uh, and so each channel has different colorations in it, like just like a camera lens, right? You can change the filter on it. Is it black and white? Is it gray and white? Is it sepia? Is it Dreams are the same way, and once you start logging your dreams and paying attention to them, you're going to see that. You're going to see they're not all. Some is like a bluish hue. Um, that's how I describe it. It's like everything is in a bluish outline rather than it being like a gray and white. It's, it's like a bluish and white. Um, and so there's different reasons for those different colorations, and it means different people are speaking. And it is very important to know who is speaking before you go and believe it. All right, so not just because it's in a riddle, I'm not just saying because it's in a riddle that it is from God, but there's different factors also in line with it. Um, and so back, you know, kind of giving an example of metaphoric and literal, and I just did this exact example in the, the teaching I was telling you about in my Dream Lover series called Restaurants and Pregnant, or sorry, it's called The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, number three, and it's about restaurants and pregnancy. Um, so when you have a dream and let's say you know that it's true you've tested the coloration and all this and you're going on you want to know is it literal or is it metaphoric obviously the best way to figure that out is to ask the lord okay but let's say you are bogged down you have 20 million dreams and you don't have time to fast for all of those eventually you're going to learn the language you're going to pick things up okay some things are set in stone and some things the lord just says hey don't lean into your understanding ask me um, get confirmation from me but let's take restaurants for example restaurants can have two meanings okay um restaurants can mean um a, basically they just mean a place you eat okay so when you dream about a restaurant it could be literally a place that you eat right a, a, an actual physical restaurant or it could be talking spiritually about a place that you spiritually eat like a church like um like a, a Bible study, you know, some sort of church event, that type of thing where you're being spiritually fed, okay? And same thing with pregnancies. Pregnancies, you dream about being pregnant, um, it could actually mean you're going to be pregnant, right? Remember that God can do the impossible. We look at Sarah, 
She thought she was well over her age of bearing children. And God's like, no, I said you're going to have a kid and you're going to have a kid. So keeping the impossible in mind that he's the God of the impossible. But also, you know, like for myself, I've had a hysterectomy. And so, um, and, and my husband's fixed also. So for me to dream that I was going to have a baby, yes, even though God can do the impossible, I'm going to actually take that over and be like, more likely it is spiritual. Um, and more likely the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready to give birth to something. I'm carrying something. It's, it's growing inside of me and I'm soon going to give birth to it. So there's a literal and there's a metaphoric meaning to most symbols in dreams. And we can kind of do the narrowing process, but please know that in order to be 100% accurate at this, you have to ask God. <laughs> Dream interpretations belong to him. And so that is the only way. All right. So um, intercession and prophetic dreams. So basically these are future dreams or dreams that might become future if there's no intervention, right? And so in the first part I have noted there's something that is likely to come to pass if intervention or intercession doesn't take place. And again, coloration is very important in these types of dreams and knowing. And as you go through the journey, you will know what uh, is being said to you um, and what type of dream it is. Is this a dream that I can pray and make a difference? Or is this a dream that the Lord has said, no, this is going to take place? Um, which would be a prophetic dream, right? Something that's taking place in the future. And again, coloration of that is very important. But basically, like I said, prophetic dreams are a thing in dreams, especially if you are a prophetic person. Um, but we see that Pharaoh wasn't necessarily what God would consider a prophet, right? But he had a prophetic dream. He did. He, 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 the Lord gave him a dream about the future, which was coming. Okay. So it gets really sticky as to, well, I had a prophetic dream. So am I a prophet? You know, and that's a whole other teaching in itself, I would imagine. So anyway, and then there's overcoming and healing dreams and, um, but they're still spiritual. No matter how we slice it, they are still a spiritual thing that's taking place. Um, dealing with your spirit, your soul, your mind, your heart, etc. Um, like, I use here as an example, dreams of smoking. And I talked about this in, an, in another video. Um, I, I smoked for many years and many times I tried to quit. And when I would quit, I would have dreams that someone handed me a cigarette and I accepted it. And sure enough, I would end up relapsing and going right back to smoking. And this is prior to, um, this is a long time ago, long before I even started really, really, you know, logging my dreams and paying attention. This was ages ago. Um, and, and so I remember plainly though, the pattern of this. And I remember very clearly the night that I dreamed that someone offered me a cigarette in my dream and I declined. And from that day on, I was free from the power of cigarettes over my life. And so it's kind of this maybe binding on earth as it is in heaven kind of thing. Um, this is definitely something to, Hey, what's broken. The supernatural is now broke in the natural, um, and I've heard people say, well, I, you know, especially people who've had traumatic experiences, um, that they, they dream this recurring thing. And, and, and a lot of times that's going to be one of two things. That is your, um, you know, one, the enemy might be trying to just torture you. He might be just trying to rattle you, keep fear in you, um, keep reopening that wound. Um, or it could be that God has given you a chance to heal. Um, my grandma passed away, um, now it's been, I don't know, 17 years ago, maybe something like that. Um, and I didn't get to say goodbye to her and, um, I wasn't super close with her, but when she died, it really, it really hurt me. It really hit me hard. Uh, a lot of crying and I dreamed consistently about her and, um, every time it just felt so good to my heart and to my soul. And, um, one night I said, uh, aren't you dead to her? And she said, I came back for those who didn't get to say goodbye. And I don't want to go into that as to whether I feel like that was my grandma or the Lord using her face to heal me. But I know that those were healing dreams. God was giving me a chance to heal through them. Um, and sometimes it is a, re a reminder to us of, like I said, with the smoking thing, this is a hurdle I have to cross over. So in real life, I need to start taking control over my thoughts, taking every thought captive, that type of thing. Um, 
it, so that that can manifest also and be broken when I'm sleeping in, in the supernatural realm. Okay. Um, so that, that is the overview of dreams <laughs> in a nutshell, like in, in the best nutshell that I, I could conjure up in the few, you know, short minutes. I've already gone longer, I think, than I, I really should in these videos. But while I'm sitting here, you know, drilling into, drilling into your head, um, hey, dreams can be from God. I also want to let you know that dreams are not always from God. Okay, that is a very dangerous path to come down. Um, we see in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20 through 21, um, it says, Do not despise prophecies. We are to test all things and hold fast to what is good. Do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, um, do not despise prophecies. It says that right here in God's word. Do not despise prophecies. I don't know why I had to say that three or four times, but I hope I'm speaking to somebody. Test all things. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Um, but if we are standing in Christ and we are walking in Christ and we are having intimate fellowship with Him, we we would want to do those things. We would want to test. We would want. It means more communion with Him. It means more fellowship with Him. It means a chance to learn bigger things and expand our understanding of the universe and um, the spiritual realm and those types of things. Um, or or they're scared too. I, I should add that in there. Maybe they're just scared. Okay. Um, so dreams are an opening to the spiritual realm, and that is not to be taken lightly. I, I again, I don't, I don't recommend or suggest taking a heavy look into dreams without committing to a consistent prayer and devotion time and intimacy with the Lord, so that He can help lead you. And do not go to Google to Google your dreams, anything like that. You are only inviting unwanted and unnecessary casualties and spirits into your life. All right. Um, Galatians 1 verse 8 says, even if an angel comes to you preaching in any other doctrine, right? Do not listen to them. Do not believe them. I have this thing where I want to pound on my desk when I talk, but then I, I listen to these before and I've done that and it messes up the sound. So I apologize, but do not receive it. Do not listen to it. Okay. Angels and angels, angels, can you see that? Angels and angels are in the spiritual realm, okay? So be cautioned, don't be led astray, know the truth, okay? Know the truth and the truth will keep you free, okay? The truth will keep you free. Um, Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the truth, okay? I am the truth and so follow him, seek him, you know, say you're interested in dreams and that type of thing. You want the giver first, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things will be added to you. Okay. So that is what I have for you today. Again, I apologize that it's so lengthy, but I did not want to go any further in this series with my, um, my consistent viewers being interested in dreams and me pretty much just leading them to the slaughter by telling them, Hey, God speaks in dreams. No, there are warnings and things you need to understand that not all dreams are from God. So if you take anything away from this, please know that God does speak in dreams to us, but not all dreams are from God. All right. God bless you guys. And I will see you in other videos.